Exactly. He's heading to Australia. He's yes, sir. Going to be a church planter. Yes, in sir. Australia. And how, field. how long have you been on your way to Australia? When did the Lord deal with you about that? Well, um, it was 1231. It was New Year's night, uh, right at just a little over a year ago. And um, God began to deal with my heart. And uh, for a while, I, he'd been working with me about it. I was in Bible college here at Anchor. And um, one of my Bible college teachers, Brother Joe Cox, come in one night. And I'd talk that morning with Pastor. I said, Pastor, God's dealing with me about Australia. And I don't know uh, anything about it. don't know anybody there. And he said, I'll tell you what, we'll pray about it. Well, that night I went into class in Bible geography. And um, we sat down and Brother Joe Cox come in and he said, uh, I've never done this before. He said, God put this on my heart today. And uh, he handed us a piece of paper that said, you are a missionary. You pick a field, pick a place, learn the, uh, learn the whole uh, landscape and everything about the place and the geography and the people and what the religions are and everything and write a paper, about a two-page paper on it. And uh, after the, the next week, about four pages later, uh, God had shown this little <laughs> town on my heart called Churchill. Amen. And uh, I, I you know, prayed about it for a long time. I didn't want to jump into something. And um, sure. <clears throat> on 1231, I was in a youth meeting at Brother Tom Hatley's church in Maryville, Tennessee. And uh, Brother Mark Stroud was preaching. And uh, he was preaching on drowning. And he said, a lot of people here tonight are spiritually drowning. And uh, you're in a place to where uh, you're, you're trying to find God's will and you're just reaching out and reaching out. When he said, all you need to do is just look on Jesus and just look on him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knelt down that night and God said, you're going to Australia. And uh, I surrendered that night to the church and come back here the next Sunday and surrendered here at Anchor and uh, started deputation. I waited a little while before I did that. I wanted to go and lay my eyes on Australia. And in July of last year, I went and viewed the land and uh, went over there with a missionary, Kyle Sutton, missionary to the Jews in Melbourne, and uh, Churchill is a small town of about 7,000 people, and there's a small community college there, and um, if you could imagine it with me about all the churches that we see riding down the road and how many churches that people pass to even get here, mm -hmm. uh, as we went through there, there is no churches of any kind in Churchill, Australia, I mean mm -hmm. of any kind of brand, My. and uh, we walked through downtown, and uh, Randy Bain had told me he's been to Australia many times, he said, brother, he said, you better make sure you're calling. He said, this is a very, very hard field. They, they do not want the gospel. They're a hard-hearted people. And when yeah. I went to Churchill, we'd, we'd seen that in Melbourne. People were hard-hearted, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't want to talk to you, trying to hand them a gospel track. They'd just say a lot of words to you, yeah. and it wasn't nice words. Yeah. And uh, so when we went and we rode out, as, uh, as, he's a missionary to the Jews too, I'll tell you this. We was riding out the hour and 20-minute ride from Melbourne over to Churchill, and uh, it had been rainy, cold, and wet. It was their winter time there. It had been just cold the whole time. And as we rode out the M1, their highway, going into Churchill, God wiped that sky clean, and there was one cloud in the whole sky. And uh, Brother Kyle pointed out to me, I said, he's missionary to the Jews, and, you know, the Jews seek after a sign. And so he's all the time dealing with that, talking with Jewish people. And in that one cloud was like a thumbs up is what it was in the shape of. And he said, brother, he said, we don't believe in signs. But he said, if we did, God just gave you one right there. And Amen. God wiped the sky clean that day. And he did a leap in my heart. The Holy Ghost did. And uh, as we rolled in the church hill, God said, you're almost home. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you right now, God did something for me that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we walked downtown, and everybody I'd met in, in, uh, in Melbourne and everywhere we'd went, they rejected the gospel. They wanted nothing to do with it. But as we walked downtown Churchill, brother, they said, them people was just coming up to me, what are you doing? Who are you? Why are you in, why are you in the town here? And uh, people in Melbourne were rejecting. We didn't want to talk to you. Don't, want who you don't, know, don't care who you are or anything. But when we walked downtown, people was coming up to us. Amen. And uh, that did something for me. And Randy Bain <laughs> told me, he said, nobody in Australia wants to even talk to you. He said, they're very personal people. They stay away from you. But that wasn't what we saw in Churchill. Yeah. And uh, this town has no church of any kind. The nearest any kind of church is a Catholic and Anglican church, which makes up most of the population, and they're about 25 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And um, this town needs a gospel witness. Amen. And uh, it's, it, God put it on my heart to go there and start the first church ever in this town. And, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about how you win people and door knocking and soul winning and handing out tracts and everything. But uh, if I've learned anything in uh, my few years of ministry, you need to build a reputation. 
and go in that town and show people that you're not there for their money. You're not there to, you know, try and get them to do something for you, but you care about their soul. Sure. And uh, as we walked around, we talked with people, and, and you know, I didn't want to be just bold and say, I'm, I'm coming here to plant a church, but just getting to know these, these t- it's a small little town. It's a little country town, and a bunch of farmers and uh, people, you know, raising crops and different things mm-hmm. in there. And I grew up in small towns, and uh, I hate the big city life. Yeah. And, uh, but, but God's called me to a little small country town to plant the first church ever. And um, uh, as of right now, we're about 8% on support. And uh, got some meetings booked coming up, and uh, God's just been opening up doors and uh, just pouring out grace, brother. Amen. And um, I, I met a missionary not long ago. His name is Ron Back. He's the newest missionary in Australia. And there's less than 200 fundamental churches in the whole country mm-hmm. of 25 million people. And uh, I met him. He's been there about 11, 12, 11, 12 months now. And um, I called him on the phone, and I was trying to get some information about you know, how to be sponsored into the country and the different things you got to do. And he said, now, who are you again? And I said, Bradley Collins going to Churchill, Australia. He said, brother, and I, I could hear him about crying on the phone. Hmm. And he said, brother, he said, we've been praying for you. My, my. He said, I heard that God was sending a missionary to Churchill. And uh, boy, I pulled over in Maple Hill Church parking lot over here, talked to him on the phone for 45 minutes, <laughs> left Bible college that night. It was early in the morning there, but late here, 14-hour time difference. And I pulled over in that parking lot, and the Holy Ghost knitted our hearts together. Yeah. And he said, brother, you don't even know it. But he said, I've been praying for you. My, my. And he said, you don't know me from anybody. You couldn't tell me if you even looked at me. But he said, God sent me here to help people plant churches. And he said, you've got a partner in the ministry waiting on you to get over here. Praise God. And so it's my burden and my desire to go to churches, get support, and get over there where God's called us. Because <laughs> every day that we labor, yeah. every day that we are here and not over there, I believe there's people going to hell. Yeah. There's people that have never heard the gospel and they don't know nothing about a relationship. All they've ever been taught is man's traditions. You got to do this. You got to go through the priest. You got to do this and this and this. They need to junk all that and get a relationship with Jesus. Yes. I'm not after tithe, mon- tithe money with them. I'm not after them to come and be a, uh, joining a church. Or anything. I just want to see somebody get saved and go to heaven. Yeah. That's my desire. Plant a church. Do something for the glory of God. Yeah. Make a difference in a town that doesn't know anything about Jesus. Yes, sir. I want to be the one, as that yeah. message was today. Yeah. I want to be the one, and, and I want somebody to come on board with us and help us and be a part of the ministry with us. And I tell you, God has been good. Amen. And every step so far, he's made provisions. And, and I tell this too. I told God when, before I surrendered, and I've, I've been to the Philippines several times. I did mission trips. I said, God, if you ever call me anywhere, call me somewhere warm. I cannot stand the cold. And so when God put Australia <laughs> on my heart, I said, glory to God, it's 115. I said, I ain't going to be cold. Well, when I did my geography paper in class, the only place in Australia that snows is Churchill, Australia. That whole little area of the state of Victoria, that's the only place to know. So God's got a sense of humor. But I tell you, through that, God's been so good to me. God has Amen. just made provisions and helped me and, and shown me things. And it's been a blessing, brother. Deputation, uh, I've heard from many people, deputation's hard, but it's been fun. Amen. Meeting Amen. people that want to come on board and help you to get there, and they pray for you. Yeah. It's like what Brother Todd Bell preached about yesterday morning, about people praying for missionaries. And I'll tell you, mm-hmm. it's, it was something good in my, in my life when I learned to pray for missionaries. And when I learned that I've got friends on the mission field that, that they just want to hear you call them. Yeah. yeah. I've, I mean, and, and the, the beauty about technology right now is I can pick up my phone and call Australia. I can call the Philippines. I can call other countries for free. Mm-hmm. I can just call the missionary and spend 10 minutes on the phone with them. And right. that does something for them that you don't even know. Just to call and say, I had you on my heart today. I love you, and we're praying for you. Mm-hmm. Courage, encourage for the journey, as the sign says over there. Right. But Churchill, Australia, and, and um, I'm getting married in June. My fiance, she's on her way up the mountain right now, be with us in service. But she uh, teaches kids, and uh, in that town, there's a place called the Hub, the Churchill Hub, mm-hmm. and they have a free daycare there, and it's all volunteer. And that's the only way they can run it is by volunteers, and they're always looking for volunteers. And God has given my fiance a two-year degree with children and a background and reputation with that. And then also, I've worked fire department for 12 years. And there's a volunteer fire department there that's always looking for volunteers. So go establish a reputation in a town 
to show people that I don't want your money, I don't want nothing from you, but I want to tell you about Jesus, yeah. and I want to make a difference in somebody's life. Because the reason in Mark chapter 1 that everybody sought Jesus, when Jesus went away in Mark chapter 1 to pray on a mountain, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, all men seek thee. Mm -hmm. Was it because he had healed the lame? Possibly. Was it because he was doing all these different miracles? That's possible. But we find out later in that chapter that he had compassion on the multitude. Compassion is a mixture of love and sorrow. Mm -hmm. And when we love somebody, we're going to pray for them and have sorrow over their soul. Right, right. And I want to love those people. When I go to sleep at night, I've got faces of people that I met in Churchill go Amen. through my mind. Amen. And I've shed many tears, Brother Morrow, for those people in Churchill. And it's my heart's desire and my prayer to get over there and do something for Jesus. Amen. Bradley, I know you told me that you had 8% of your support. Now that, and I understand why, you know, there's a lot of missionaries that go to a certain place and it may not require as much money. Right. And may, they might get their support real quick. Yeah. But I know Australia is one of the most expensive places yes, sir. to live on the face of this earth. Yes, sir. And it's going to take you a while yes, unless sir. some people get behind you. Yes, sir. And, and start getting under the burden of a missionary going to Australia. And so, uh, brother, when is your projected, I mean, I know you sound like you're prayed up on about every aspect of this thing. When you think the Lord might have in mind for you to get over there? Well, I've, I spend a lot of time with my pastor, and uh, I've talked with him about it, and I've got, uh, we do a three-year program here for Bible College, and I've got, uh, one, after this semester, I've got one more year, mm -hmm. and then um, I'm still working a job right now to, to meet all the needs and everything as I travel, and um, it's my projected date to be there in two years. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's going to take a lot. Um, just to give you an example, the missionary we stayed with in Melbourne, he lives on the outskirts of the city. And he does not have a house that's big and fancy by no means. And uh, I, don't, I don't believe I know a missionary that, that I know that does. Mm -hmm. But he offered his home to me. And he told me it was a smaller house, maybe 1,300 square feet. And uh, he told me, he said, this house cost us $1,900 a month to rent. And it's by no means a fancy home. It's tight right. quarters. He's got three kids. Right. And uh, it's a little cheaper in Churchill where I'm going, but... It does take a lot of money. The average meal, I, I ate a meal at KFC. They got a KFC over there, brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went over there, and uh, we had KFC, and it was $11 for one person to eat. And that's just a little box meal. And uh, we tried kangaroo. Kangaroo's one of the cheapest meats over there, and it tastes just like deer. So uh, hallelujah right there. You can get it in any store. But uh, trying to figure out some ways, I sat down with the missionaries that are there, and they showed me their budget. And they said, this is what you look for. This is, this is what you have to budget for. This is your money for food. This is this and this and this and this and this. And they showed me a bunch of, of different things that they've encountered that in 15 years of ministry there that they've worked through. And uh, so it's going to take a lot of money. Amen. And it's going to take some time. Sure. But by the grace of God, I'm ready to go. Oh, praise God. Give us your phone number or, or email address. Give, give the folks something. I know okay. they can get in touch through WGCR here too, but yes. maybe some of them, they want to scribble it down right now if you got all that yep. information. I, uh, my name is Bradley Collins with Anchor Baptist Missions here, and uh, my home church is Anchor Baptist Church, and my cell phone number is 828-768-2276. And uh, you're welcome to, to get in touch with the church here. They can get in touch with me. I live here on the property sure. full time. Amen. And uh, so that's how you can get in touch with me. Praise God, Brother Bradley. Thank you for dropping by and sharing yes, all sir. that with us. I knew you was headed that way, and I'm glad we got to find out just a little bit more. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll trust God with you. I'm yes, looking sir. forward to hearing great things. I just believe God's got great his hand Great things on. he has done. Amen. Looking Amen. forward to it. All right. We're going to go back to Brother Archie Watkins here with three numbers back to back, and then we're going to read some more pledges. Appreciate the Lord's help with Brother Bradley here. God Thank bless you, brother. you. 